Well, good morning. Welcome to the FIG Challenge here Saturday morning, August 27th. And this is the Checksum Challenge, and I'm your challenge host, Bill Ragsdale. The challenge for today is to create a one or two digit check code for a 10 digit account number. Uh, you have a couple of possibilities. One is to detect a single digit that is an error. Another approach is to detect the exchange of two adjacent digits. And I'll note that the checksums are a very primitive form of hash. Uh, hash codes take a major form of life in uh, computer technology these days. But the check codes originated back in the electromechanical days, I think, in the holler days when they first began data processing. So here's how it started uh, from my standpoint. We wrote a check a couple of months ago for $400 that was returned back non-sufficient funds. You said NSF at the top, puts a chill down. The lady we gave the check to was embarrassed. She was embarrassed to bring it back. We were not quite embarrassed. We were just more irritated. And we traced the problem down to a one digit error. If you look down with the red arrow at the top on the red arrow points to a zero, which is in our correct account number. And if you look at the bottom nine, that's how it was transposed and handled by the bank. I guess it got to the payer and uh, rejected as the account didn't exist or for some other reason. So how do we uh, address this particular need? Uh, the uh, our first point that our method or algorithm that I used was to decompose a 10 digit number, that is a four stack number, into 10 decimal bytes. Then across those 10 bytes to compute the sum of those bytes and then uh, extract it modulo 10. So we want a, a decimal number zero through nine when we're done as a check digit. We'll append that check digit, check digit as the 11th digit on the account number and then Upon repeated readings of the account number, along with the check digit, one would uh, perform the check across the 10 digits, compare with the 11th to see, has there been a digit error? Here's our fourth setup. We did a couple of values at the beginning. The first one is the reference number, which is the original uh, correct number. And then the test number is one that has been read, but possibly would have an error in it. The uh, 10 dot digits, is the workspace for our 10 bytes of a decomposed number. We then have our reference uh, data for a decade. We have the uh, decade for uh, reference, and then also the test decade. Uh, these are the uh, checksums for the corresponding reference and test number. And then secondly, we will have a position check. And so we have two check digits for the position check. The starting point is to expand the, the 10 digit four stack number into 10 individual bytes. And the uh, loop array arrangement we see here does that. Uh, notice that the, uh, the decomposition by tens is done by the mod operator, which works with the least significant digits first. To make this easier to debug and visualize, I, uh, I uh, put the uh, bytes in reverse order into our little workspace. Since mod reverses them and we put them in the storage space in reverse order, they will come out uh, direct reading when we do diagnostics. For the first uh, test, which we just want a simple checksum, the word from dot 10 dot digits does that. It computes the mod 10 sum of the, of the uh, uh, 10 bytes that are in the storage area. It's a simple do loop. It goes into 10 dot digits with I plus C fetch gets a byte, adds it to the loop, continues 10 times, and then does a, a 10 mod at the end to round to a decimal number. The driving program in this case of the uh, simple checksum is, is quite readable. We say the reference number, we, we input that number, then we build the uh, 10 dot digit array. From the 10 dot digit array, we extract the checksum and pass it to the reference dot decade dot sum. The same sequence is used starting with the test number built into 10 digits, checksum computed, and it goes into the test dot decade sum. So now we have our two checksums. One is our reference number at the beginning, and the second one is the one that may or may not have an error in it. The last three lines gives a simple English language 
uh, display where the decade sums match or do not. This is the mathematics that's going on in this case. Uh, on the left, we see our reference number, number zero through nine, uh, 10 digits in all. Then the uh, summation going along where we add the one, two, three, four, five, and we get one, three, six, 10, 15, 21, 28, 36, and 45. Uh, extracting mod modulo uh, 10, we get a check digit of five. On the right, I have added in place of the zero, I've added the number one. We go through the same process. And of course, down at the bottom, we see one plus gives a value of 46. The mod extraction gives us a checksum of six, which of course would be in error. And this is the diagnostic display we get. The first three lines is the input. We simply type into fourth, the one, two, three, or five, six, two, through zero, goes into the reference number. The error type uh, uh, number goes in a test number, and then we run the program validate.decade.check. And we see the output. We see our test number, reference number. We see the test number. And then the checksum is five and six, as we saw just a moment ago. And then an error report. There are a decade of error checksums. Now, the other algorithm is a little more interesting. Uh, in this case, we want to check for digit reversal. Not a digit change, but a digit reversal. Very common when you're handwriting numbers down or when you're reading numbers over the telephone to do a digit reversal. So in this case, we decompose the uh, 10 digit account number as we did before. The work is done at step number two. Over the 10 digits at the even position, starting at zero, we add the digit. If the digit is located at an odd position, we subtract it. So the important part here is that the digits are now position sensitive. And a given number, say the number five, will yield a different value if it's at an odd or an even position. Then we go right ahead as we did before, we append that checksum as an 11th digit, and it now travels with the account number into the future where uh, checks would then be made on a, um, a digit transposition. This is the internal uh, activity that you would see. Notice that in the middle, we've taken the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six. And in the case on the right, we have reversed the six and five. So it's one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, four, six, five, seven, eight, nine, zero. The math goes down in the column as we see. And when we get down to the five and the six, we would expect to see a, a value of of three and minus three. And of course, with the digit reversal, we get a four and a minus one. Down at the bottom is our checksum. In this case, well, the one with the error is a seven and the one is correct is with five. This is the uh, a word that does the actual work of the comparisons, a simple do loop over the 10 digits. Uh, from 10 dot digits, I plus C fetch, we extract the uh, a, uh, the first number and we add it into a running sum. Then we go uh, 10 dot digits I one plus, and now we've stepped ahead by one to an odd position and that is subtracted. The loop is a plus loop. We are stepping across uh, two numbers at a time. So this would step across by even numbers zero, two, four, six, eight. And at the very end, of course, the 10 mod extracts the uh, single decimal digit. The driving program is rather simple, uh, rather uh, like the one before, where we take the reference number, we run it through, in this case, position check, and we generate the reference position check. We take the test number, we run through the same process, and we generate the test position check. The bottom portion then is our simple comparison and error report. This is the output of that, uh, of that uh, routine. It gives us the input numbers, one through uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, and the uh, uh, test number, one, two, three, four, six, five, seven, eight, nine, zero. The uh, code correctly calculates the reference check is uh, five, and the test check is seven, and there is an error check. Oh, pardon me, there is an error revealed. Here's a couple of uh, comments on the application of checksums. Uh, first case is the credit card magnetic stripes use a decimal checksum 
identical to what we've described. They just do a simple uh, modulo 10 sum across the card and append one digit. In addition, each digit on the card, which are in binary, there, there are four, uh, it's BCD, and they are uh, four bit binary, uh, binary coded decimal numbers with a, a, a parity bit. So there are five bits per digit. So that is a longitudinal error check. And then the, the, that's a lateral error check. The longitudinal error check is the parity digit at the end. Uh, I rate this uh, magnetic stripe technique as, uh, as rather good. Uh, not terribly robust, but it's been in use in credit cards for the last 50 or 60 years. I'll make another observation to extend this a little bit. If we have our two, both position and, uh, and, and digit error checksums, if we XOR those together, we will now get a dual comparison between the two methods. Uh, it, the process will be applying both methods simultaneously, and this will detect an error in one or the other, but not both. That point is, if there's a single digit error, it will be revealed. If there's a transmission, it will be revealed. But if you have both uh, digit error and transmission, you, the process will not definitely reveal the error. However, uh, if multiple errors occur, imagine such as a transposition and a digit change, uh, this checksum will only trap nine out of 10 errors. In other words, there are there is one error code that is correct and there were there are nine that are uh, would re, that would reveal an error. So um, we only trap about about nine out of 10 errors, possibly a little bit less than that. Um, in data processing, that really isn't very good. But since these methods are assuming there's a high degree of reading accuracy, we're only trying to catch the exceptional case. And as far as I know, uh, there are no error checks on the encoding on traditional paper checks. That's called MICR. It's the magnetic numbers at the bottom of the check. They use an optical coding and a magnetic coding. Originally, it was a magnetic ink. I believe they've gotten away from the magnetic ink now, and they use the black ink because the reading is all done uh, optical scanning. But uh, there is no error check on checks, and that's why my check had an error on it and was returned NSF. And incidentally, from personal experience, I've been to check processing centers, and because they're handling paper fiber, they tend to be very dirty, a lint-filled environment. Sometimes there are uh, uh, additions put onto checks. Sometimes there are staples on checks. So the check processing is, is, uh, can be a fairly messy environment. So the error checking is important. But as I pointed out, on checks, there's little to no error checking done. So that concludes my remarks. I hope you found it interesting. And I'll go back to uh, Kevin. Uh, this is Bill Ragsdale. Thank you for your kind attention.